Good morning and welcome to another uh, stream service here at the Church of the Epiphany. So happy that you can join us online. If you have your own prayer book at home, we begin on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I, I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then look, the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I point you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 71, and we'll read responsively by whole verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if, I, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful, or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in the wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. 
For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that, ha that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zephra in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman and Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading from 1 Corinthians is perhaps some of Paul's best-known work. Most of us are probably familiar with it from weddings. I think most weddings I have attended and most weddings that I have performed have had 1 Corinthians 13 as one of the selected lessons. Even the most cursory reading of it makes it apparent why. Its central message is the very nature of love and the profound power of love. Certainly, any couple about to enter the journey of marriage together would want to hear this message. It will be a valuable thing for them to carry with them into their new life together. And for that matter, it's just as valuable for a married couple entering their 50th year of marriage. But I think we do ourselves a disservice if we keep this passage within the confines of marriage only. The love that it speaks to goes beyond the love of two individuals committing themselves to each other. It speaks to a love that permeates every aspect of our lives. I think to properly understand this passage, we need to set it alongside the last two weeks' readings from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Two weeks ago, Paul spoke to us about spiritual gifts and their many varieties, about how we all have gifts that we share with others, of how we participate in the spiritual gifts of others. Last week, Paul spoke on the community in which these gifts arise. How even though we are individuals, we are connected one to another. That many members make up the one body, an inseparable body that would be incomplete without all of its members. 
This week, Paul is speaking to us about what lies at the foundation of our gifts, about what binds us in our connection. Love. Love is the thing that imbues us with our many gifts, and love is the thing that makes our gifts worthy of sharing and partaking in with others. Love is the thing that knits and binds us one to another into the single body of Christ. Love gives the body life and purpose. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I'm confident in my opinions and speak with passion and conviction but do not have love, then I only shout into an echo chamber and hear only that echo back. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I master this world with intellect, technology, personality, and force of will, and bring my environment under my submission, but do not have love, then all I produce is vanity and hubris. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. If I do acts of charity and acts of kindness, but I do not love those who I seek to serve, then all that I have amounts to nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. In response to this section, St. John Chrysostom writes, let us examine this statement in its application to Christ, and then we shall see the force of what has been said. For our Lord Jesus Christ was both spit upon and beaten with rods by pitiful slaves. And not only did he not count it a, a humiliation, but he even exalted and called the thing glory. At the cross, he brought in a robber and murderer with himself before the rest into paradise. And discoursing with a sinful woman, and this, when the bystanders all accused him, he counted the thing not to be disgraceful, but both allowed her to kiss his feet and to bedew his body with her tears and to wipe them away with her hair. And this amid a company of spectators who were foes and enemies, for love does nothing unseemly. What are we without love? Love is the thing that imbues us with our many gifts, and love is the thing that makes our gifts worthy of sharing and partaking in with others. Love is the thing that knits and binds us one to another into the single body of Christ. Love gives the body life and purpose. Love allows us to enter into the life and ministry of Jesus Christ to live out his gospel, to make the good news a present reality in the world.
when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. I think one of the hardest things about this pandemic is what it has revealed to us about our society. I know I can speak for myself when I say it has revealed things about myself. We've seen everything put to the test and put under strain. The economy, our healthcare system, our education system, our political system, we have witnessed all of them reel and stagger. I know I personally in all areas of my life have been tested and put under strain. So often it seems like we are just children retreating from civility and reason, finding comfort in accusations and conspiracy. So often I feel as if I am blind groping my way through the days and weeks and months, not knowing what the right course is. And in these times, if I stop and pray and look and listen, it becomes so painfully apparent what is missing. Love. Love that strengthens. Love that gives courage love that Jesus showed to us in the self-giving and the self-sacrifice of his cross. A love that holds the deepest, deepest truth and knowledge there is to possess, that we are nothing without each other. We are nothing without the love of Jesus Christ. I put my hope and faith in this love. And I know that you do too. And as long as we begin all things and end all things in this love, all will be well. For it is in love that we gain everything. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> the prayers of the people are Form 1, found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. With all your heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the love and kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those on our parish prayer list and those whose name we now, <clears throat> name now either silently or aloud, let us pray to the, to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, peace to you. Peace to you, Corey. Thank you uh, again for being with us today, and, and also for all your understanding and our uh, temporary return to online worship. Uh, as we uh, said in our original message, uh, in the coming month, uh, we're going to reevaluate everything. Um, and we hope to get the word to you as soon as possible to let you know uh, when we'll be getting back into the building. So please keep your eyes out for that. And again, thank you for your patience. Let us end together uh, with the Lord's Prayer, which you can find on page 364. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.